So today is the day I finally get around to installing an electric power steering kit that I have for my 1977 Datsun 280Z. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to just put together a short video uh, outlining the steps uh, involved in the installation process. So this is pretty much everything that comes with the kit. You have, of course, the steering rack with the electric motor on it. I'm not sure what the motor is off of, but uh, it also has this uh, sleeve with the Allen keys which you can lock off once you orient the motor in the direction you want out of the way. Um, also included would be the male and female uh, shafts with the knuckles on the end that uh, obviously slides into the, the male portion slides into the female. But before that, it has to go through the firewall through this sort of swivel. This uh, swivel section doesn't really need to be adjusted once it's uh, set in place. Uh, it just allows you to angle it correctly uh, to line up with everything and then of course you have the Allen keys uh, sort of stud here to lock it into position when you're done. The only thing I wasn't sure about was the orientation of uh, this the same device with the swivel uh, but from studying a little bit it seems clear that the Allen key portion should be in the firewall area for you to access it a little bit more easily and to lock it off. Of course, you have the control module, which is sort of the brains of the device. Um, now, this seems to take ground off of the chassis because according to the instructions, it needs to be bolted to the firewall. So I guess we'll look into that uh, when we get to that point, but that's just something to keep in mind. And then finally, the last part of this is this knob or potentiometer, which adjusts uh, how much assist you get, you know, I sort of zero to 100. Again, the instructions advise somewhere between 25 to 50%. I'll figure out uh, what is best for me when I get to that point as well. Now, I got this particular unit from zpowersteering.com. Uh, there are quite a few out there. Uh, this one seemed like, uh, after my research, one of the better ones. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them. They haven't paid me or anything. I did buy this, but thought I'd make this video to make it a little easier for the next person who wants to install one. Now, my install is going to be a little different because if you don't know already, I have an RB26 swap and a right-hand drive conversion. So uh, the steering shaft comes out on the intake side. Um, and so it's a little different, but overall, hopefully the, the steps are the same, although you might have to make some adjustments for yours. Now, the first step is to remove this coupler or biscuit, as it's called. Uh, it's sort of a dampener for the original rack. It's not needed anymore, as I say. So this has to be taken apart. Uh, there's just enough room here for me to access the four bolts with my um, electric ratchet. Hopefully that makes it a little easier to take apart. They should be 12 bolts and nuts. Um, so you're gonna probably have to rotate the wheel a bit as you try to access them. Uh, at least I did to, to get them to line up to where you can uh, reach them. So might be easier not to slide the bolts out once the nuts are removed so that you can continue to turn it as you go along and just remove all the bolts once when you're done. So as things usually go, the last bolt is a bit more tricky because it lines up perfectly with the little um, raised section here where the uh, lock off bolt would go for the shaft here. So I'm not going to be able to use my ratchet here. I'll probably have to use two spanners and since there's not a lot of room, it's a little tricky but very doable. So when you're done removing that uh, circle biscuit coupler, this is what you should see left behind. Now, it isn't required for you to remove it from the car like I did, but uh, it was difficult for me to remove the splines and it was much easier to just pull it off of the steering rack at the bottom there and just remove the whole thing to work with it. And uh, I'd recommend if you can, maybe the same thing for you. These haven't been taken apart for probably a long time and things get a little corroded and stuck together. All right, so that was in pretty tight. Um, what I had to do was just use my vise. I had to uh, sort of lock that off there uh, in position, just get the angle right, uh, get my old trusty do everything screwdriver, um, a mallet or a hammer, and give it a couple of bangs, and it, it came out pretty well. But as you can see, there's a bit of rust and corrosion there as expected. Now, while I had out this section of the shaft, I took the opportunity to push on the male section of of the smaller shaft that comes with the kit. Uh, again, this part here was quite difficult to get on. 
I had to use my voice again. Uh, of course, you have to be very careful with these U joints. They are sensitive, so no harsh impacts, but there was no way I was getting that on from in, uh, leaving it in the car. So maybe you'll be uh, more fortunate than I was. Maybe yours is less corroded or hasn't been coated or whatever my problem was. But again, with the age of these cars, it might just be easier to remove it. All right, so the next step is removing these four bolts that hold this plate to the firewall. Uh, this is where having a friend would come in very handy because obviously you can't reach around from under the car on the inside and the outside. I was able to get it done alone, however, by using power tools kind of shocked the nuts loose. But yeah, having a friend at this point would make things a lot easier for sure. After you've done that, the next thing would be the to loosen the two bolts uh, that are sort of holding uh, the, the shaft right up at the point by the steering wheel. Don't remove these yet since then everything will drop down. Um, just loosen them enough but keep them caught. Before we remove them, we're going to remove the plastic clamshell that covers the switches and the connections and then loosen all of them up, the trafficator switch, the lights and so forth. Uh, get them out of the way since they're quite sensitive and we don't want to damage them. And then we also have to remove the ignition barrel to put it back onto the new uh, shaft and we'll see how that's done in a bit. The two switches come apart pretty easily. There's, I think it's a, a 10 bolt top and bottom kind of sandwiching them together and they separate into two pieces left and right once those are removed. Okay, now that we have everything disconnected and the column is clear and free, we can finally remove those two bolts and we should be able to just fish what's left of the rack through the firewall and completely take it out of the vehicle. Okay, so the old shaft came up pretty easily and we were able to bolt the new adapter plate here in with relative ease as well. I've also reconnected the shaft to the rack and of course pushed the male section of the smaller part that came in the kit through the swivel uh, you can kind of you kind of orient this to point in the direction that it generally will have to face uh, up by where the steering wheel is uh, just to make it easier when you go to reinsert that that everything lines up a little more easily okay so this side of the short shaft with a knuckle that came with the kit the female side slides over the male one that we just saw in the car already um, this of course has a Allen key um, with a nut that can lock off. You can go ahead and tighten that now. There's no need to leave that loose. Uh, we should be able to slide that all together and line up the two bolts that we just removed. Uh, before we put it in the car though, we need to reinstall or remove our ignition barrel and put it on the new shaft. Uh, to get this done, usually there are four bolts. Two of them are screws. Uh, can be removed easily. Mine was missing them. I, I guess someone went at this earlier. The other two though are blank for security reasons. So you can use a Dremel or some other cutoff wheel, maybe if you're a patient of file, and cut some thin grooves um, into the blanks. So this is more or less what it should look like when you're done. Everything comes apart quite easily. They're two small split washers and uh, you'll see that there's a hole in the uh, shaft. That's the steering wheel lock you want to line back uh, your barrel with uh, the hole on the new shaft as well now would also be a great opportunity to, to clean your uh, all your terminals your connections um, you know you don't want to have to go back at this again and if you're like me many of these haven't been pulled apart in perhaps decades so the instructions are to mount this to the firewall or the chassis somewhere uh, no doubt looking at it is because it actually grounds from that plate there um, with the two terminals you can see there uh, but I did uh, run or tested it with a separate ground switch uh, just connected it to that point there um, straight to the battery and it does work so you can ground it separately if you want uh, but it just so happens I have a piece of metal flat plate bracket here I drill four holes to line up with an area where uh, something was removed uh, behind the dash on mine. Uh, I don't know if yours will be uh, like that, but this is what I had to do or what worked best for me. Uh, you can see the two holes there that I used to mount the actual bracket. And then of course, uh, drill the two holes to line up with the ones that are on the plate now for the module. 
I did of course grind down the points of contact so it will get a ground through it. Uh, it's not going to work if you leave it painted of course. Uh, but I did also run a separate ground still to the chassis in a different point, kind of redundancy. It might be an overkill but I don't have a problem with that. Alright so the module is nice and tight, I do have it grounded through the chassis. And then another ground run to the top above in a, a separate location. Now this is the point where you would normally run power straight through the firewall to the battery. However, I have things done a little differently because I don't have a battery in my engine bay at all. I have batteries, yes, plural batteries. I have two batteries behind each seat. So I need to run an uh, extension or uh, run power through the side and uh, run that to the battery in the back. This is probably a step that you can leave out, it's just more work for me, but I had to do this, so I'm showing you how I did it. So I have my main power wire here uh, run directly to the battery now, as instructed. But we also have the second power wire here, which has to be run or wired into ignition. So it's only going to get 12 volts when your the car is set to on. Uh, so using my trusted multimeter here, I figured out that there is a wire on uh, this particular harness here. Uh, I think it's a cream wire. Well, maybe it was white originally, but it is cream now. Uh, that gets 12 volts only with ignition on. So I think I'm going to tap into that. Um, and uh, that, I believe, powers the relay that turns on the module. Um, now that I'm down here, there was something I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, when you're installing the uh, shaft part with the motor attached, uh, it's going to swivel around a lot, which you need to get it to exactly where you want it out of the way before you tighten those four uh, Allen key uh, studs or bolts that will lock it into position. Just be cautious because it does have some weight and it moves quite easily and I learned the hard way that it will squeeze your finger quite badly. So we're more or less onto the final step which is to install the knob, the potentiometer um, and this is pretty straightforward too, it all comes apart. The knob slips off the top, screws and tightens together. You just want to hold the size of the threaded area here. I chose to put it facing down just below my where my left leg would be, kind of out of the way. Uh, it doesn't tempt anyone to go playing with it. Um, it's not the sort of thing I think I'm going to need to adjust regularly, but it's still good to have it somewhere accessible. I'm also going to use my Dremel to trim the shaft part down just so that it's long enough for the knob to sit flush with the bottom of the dash here. Alright, so that's it there. Uh, nice and neat. Easy to get to even while seated. It's hardly noticeable where it is. And uh, yeah, so all that's left now really is to put everything back together, tidy up all the wires, and move on to the next thing. Of course, test it all out, make sure it's working the way it's supposed to, and see how it feels compared to what it was before. So, doing a quick test before I put everything back together, or as back together as it was, uh, this is what it was like to try and turn the wheel before with no power steering. Uh, quite a bit of effort, not much fun. I mean, the video doesn't really reflect the effort fully, but uh, you might note that I have an RB26, so there's a lot of added weight at the front. Uh, on top of that, I have on two, four, five tires at the front, so even more grip. So driving at slow speeds, uh, parking, uh, you probably realize or know if you're here watching this video uh, what the problem is. It's a bit of a chore at slow speeds. Uh, it's no fun as I said. So, so how does it compare with the power steering on? Uh, well, one thing to note before we get started, uh, if you are trying to test it and you're not getting it to work, uh, try turning the knob, the potentiometer. If it's set to, to zero, it's not going to trigger the steering to come on, obviously. Uh, so you need to turn it even a little bit to engage it. Um, so don't don't panic if you turn on and nothing comes on. You'll know it's engaging uh, because there is a pretty loud audible click. Um, not sure if you're gonna hear it over the pumps. Uh, I have twin twin Walbro pumps in the rear, uh, but yeah, you will hear a, a noticeable click. So this is it. Uh, about 30% a third of the way on which is kind of probably where I'm going to leave it. Um, I might do even less. Uh, I do want a little bit of feedback from the steering um, but uh, as you can see 
there's no comparison. I, I can literally turn the wheel with one finger. Um, it is completely different, has changed the entire driving experience at slow speeds for sure. So my verdict without having driven properly and given a, a full review at this point would be it was well worth um, what I paid for it. Uh, they're not cheap, but it's so much more enjoyable to drive now. There's no parasitic drag from a hydraulic power steering setup. It's just so simple. Um, I did this install on my own in probably uh, less than three hours. Um, so, you know, it, it with a friend, it might even be faster. I really hope this video helps you in some way. Um, open the comments uh, below. Any questions, I'll, I'll try and answer. Uh, and if it was useful to you, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.